Hello, welcome to Faith and Friends. It's a week full of celebration as we have National Popcorn Day, right. Penguin Awareness Day, <laughs> Squirrel Appreciation Day, Whoa. National Handwriting Day, and National Blonde Brownie Day, oh. otherwise known as our producer was bored and was looking at things to fill time. Who's not aware of penguins, first of all? Penguin awareness? I, I believe in the city of Philadelphia they try to ignore penguins. That might just be a hockey thing. They're still aware, <laughs> though. I'm very confused. I couldn't even... Why is there so many days in one week? I know what penguins are. National Blonde Brownie Day? I don't like those. I like the regular chocolate brownies. Well, it's a good thing we decided not to make blonde brownies today. At again. what point are there too many holidays? Now, are there bad jokes about blonde brownies, too? <laughs> Probably. I've never met an intelligent Are we brownie. talking about brownies as in the little Girl Scouts, or are we talking about brownies as in the confectionery? Oh, I think well, we better move the, on the, very uh, quickly with this, because it could get... <laughs> this is a family show. We want to keep it that way. Of course, most of the national focus this week has gone to Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which is January the 19th. Also a week here in Lima to give thanks for safety. An explosion and fire at the Husky Refinery on Saturday, January 10th. Shook homes, even broke some windows, but no reported injuries. Amazing. As refinery officials work to clean up the aftermath, there are stories of praise to God for what could have been. We actually got a phone call just a few days ago from a woman who has refinery workers in her church, and they said that prior to the explosion, 50 of them were right around that area and their supervisor said, you know, it's really cold. Let's let's drop off of the project we're doing right now. So they had, I'm not sure how close it was wow. to the explosion, but they had mm -hmm. left the scene prior to that. Had they not made that decision, according to her, could have been a very, Unreal. very different response. Let's talk about watching for divine appointment. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and following that divine mm -hmm. appointment, hearing what God has to say mm -hmm. and then moving on. Mm -hmm. We definitely do praise God for the hand of safety in that situation. We also praise God for stories of cured cancer, one of which you'll hear today, the story of Sonia Kreitz. Also coming up on today's show, a look at the recent OMEA District 3 Festival, and we'll tell you about a program called Hotspot, which is changing the lives of those suffering addictions and other strongholds in their lives. But first, today's scripture. Zach? That's right. We're talking about eagles today, which of course takes us to Isaiah 40, 30, and 31. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You know, Andy, in this life, we are guaranteed to grow weary. <laughs> Maybe you are today. You're run down. You're dealing with some challenges, some struggles, anything that can get you down and just tired. But God promises us that if we put our hope in the Lord, that we will of course, soar on wings like eagles, that he will deliver us and give us that encouragement and hope and energy that we need. And no matter where you are, whatever step you need to take, whether it's just one step forward, whether it's from a walk into a run, that verse covers the gamut of yeah. where we are in life, whether we're struggling or doing great, we can always take it to that next step where we are soaring like eagles. Amen. That's right. Well, coming up in just a few minutes, we'll tell you about a local program that is intended to help men of all ages soar with Christ as their strength, regardless of what has, what has hindered them in the past. But first, the OMEA District 3 Festival. That's right. The annual honors concert took place just last week called the All-Star Game of Music for us sports-minded people, featuring some of the most talented high school musicians in the region. This year, the OMEA turns 91 wow. years old. Happy birthday! Yeah, I hope I make it to 991. <laughs> Today, we begin the first of a two-part series on the Ohio Music Education Association. Mark Kuntz took a look at how the OMEA is not just impacting current musicians, but generationally. This is an organization that is truly giving back. What were you doing in 1924? In Ohio, an organization called the Ohio Music Education Association was being formed, designed to promote music education all across the state. And by 1970, right here in this region, students had an opportunity for things like this, the annual band, choir, and jazz band honors concert. And the opportunity has been a staple in the region ever since. Parents grow up watching their children's involvement. Children grow up to become teachers. Area teachers catch the vision and join the board to keep the music going and the opportunities available for the next generation. Well, I've always come to auditions and the rehearsals because my kids have been involved in it. And about six years ago, uh, we had a, a turn and a, a lady stepped down and Mr. Sloan asked me if I would be interested in helping with the choir. And I said, sure, because I love to be here. Um, 
I, I have a great time watching the other directors direct, so I, I get a lot of information from them. The mission of the OMEA is to advance music education by encouraging the study and making of music by all. This philosophy is living and breathing here in District 3. Uh, I became a music educator because I had an outstanding music educator and band director that made me want to become a music teacher. And I'm a proud member of the Ohio Music Education Association uh, in my ninth year of teaching. And I can proudly say that I am a product of District 3, having grown up in Wapakoneta and now teaching in New Bremen. Um, I was in this ensemble for three years and have a lot of pride in the ensemble and their performance and am honored that my colleagues have elected me to serve as their president, finishing up my term here in July. Students selected for the annual OMEA Honors Concert are given opportunities to work under some of the best conductors and directors in the region. Local representatives understand the importance of this, thus making honors concert planning an ongoing and top priority. We hire our guest conductors, very high profile band and choir directors, about two years in advance because we want the top notch conductors and they book up pretty fast. So it starts two years in advance and then we take about a year off of that particular festival to run the next festival and, and on it goes. So we have already hired directors for 2017 as we sit here in January of 2015. I would encourage anybody who is interested in singing whatsoever to come and do this. It is really a, truly an experience that you don't get at your home school and it's just great to be around these kind of people. It's great to meet all kinds of different directors. They have so much to teach you and you have so much to learn. It's just a great opportunity for our kids to come together and sing and play their instruments and, and do what we love which is making music. Um, I can't think of anything better for kids to spend their time on and that's what OMEA is all about, supporting our kids. Thank you, Mark. We want to remind you, you can see the entire OMEA District 3 Honors Festival anytime you'd like. You can purchase a complete copy of that DVD or Blu-ray DVD or an audio CD. You can purchase that for $25, Blu-ray for $30, audio CD for $15 by calling us at the TV station 419-339-4444 or you can go online to WTLW.com or WOSN.TV to place your order. Well, Ryan Yale had a nice testimony about how music has helped him to become who he is today. Well, that is what we hope, of course. We want to see God's talents mature in our young people so that they grow up to be exactly what God wanted them to be. But you know, that doesn't always happen. If you're anything like me, you can say, I've messed up. I've made some mistakes. I've gotten myself in a few pickles. Thankfully, we have God who is always wanting to pick us up no matter where we've been or what we've done, no matter if we've been addicted, whatever it is, God wants to provide freedom. Well, there is a program, a relatively new program in this area that, to be honest, could be exactly what you need. It's for men in this region and it's called Hotspot. And I have Pastor Wayne Bradley, uh, who actually started the program a year ago, almost, almost exactly a year ago, to yes, talk more about this program. Explain to me, what is Hotspot? Hotspot is a program developed for men who have maybe tried all the other programs that are out here. Um, one of the things, the gist of um, what happened for me is that I had to try so many things until I finally got something that was able to get me out of this stronghold. Eventually, it all boils down and gets back to just trusting God and believe in God for your healing. But Hotspot is a program for those of us who maybe have yet to get to the point where we wanna trust God. Um, one of the prerequisites for most programs in, in any kind of healing program is that you, at some point, you have to believe God. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't wanna believe God. So what Hotspot does is Hotspot attacks this part of us that doesn't wanna look at the God area. It tells us that you've tried this, you've tried that, you've tried everything, and now we believe that Hotspot is a program that's designed for men who have tried everything. It's a no frills program, a no wiggle rooms type of program. We don't uh, try to pat each other on the back. We don't try to co-sign one another. We don't try to sugarcoat anything. We just come right at each other with the real root deal of what's going on mm. with our addictions and mm. with our strongholds. You said two words that I think are really important. First, you said addiction, yes. which uh, affects more people yes. than anybody wants to realize. Amen. Amen. And then you said root, you yes. know, the root cause of problems. Yes, it's, it's, it's sometimes easy to 
deal with the surface problems. Amen. But as long Amen. as the root is still there, that addiction might still exist. So HOTSPOT is an acronym. Yes. It stands for Honest, Open, Transparent, so Purpose Overcomes Temptation. Yes, ma'am. Which I think is fabulous. Amen. What Amen. type of person, who, who, describe for me who is going to start coming to your HOTSPOT meetings? We started Hotspot a year ago with a group of men who came first and foremost for the reasons that I just gave you, that they have tried everything. So the type of guy that's going to be attracted to Hotspot and they may benefit from Hotspot is going to be someone who almost is at the point of just giving up, mm -hmm. saying these things don't work. Mm -hmm. If they do work, they don't work for me. It's mm -hmm. very discouraging sometimes to see men and women finding their place and getting healed and you for some reason can't seem to get yeah, it. Yeah. You know, it seems like yeah. sometimes that, well, this isn't for me, this isn't for me, this isn't for me, and I would submit to those men that addiction isn't for you, that strongholds yeah, aren't for amen. you, that yeah. these things that destroy you are not for you, because like you said, it's not just the person, but it's a family and a, and a societal issue. And what we have seen in Hotspot is these guys who have been willing to, to first off to sign a covenant that says every part of my life is wide open to the guys in Hotspot, a closed group that doesn't talk about these things, but we don't hide anything from one another because most of us have done things that we would never want right. anyone to know about. And when right. you get in a room, there's a certain measure of healing in the fact yes. that you can share these things that have been secrets for so very long. Oh, yeah. So we, we're getting some guys that, that really need this program. So, so when we say addictions, are we talking yeah. drug addictions, sexual we're, addictions? Yes, what types of addictions? I'm glad you asked me that because we are talking drugs, but we're also talking pornographic material. We're talking computers. We're talking any stronghold, any addiction, because it doesn't have to be something that's immediately showing how the effect can be negative on you and those around you. It can be a slow eating thing. It can be something mm -hmm. that has been with you maybe your whole life and it's been the one thing that you never really zeroed in on because as we said in the beginning, you know, it's so easy to look at the surface and it's so easy to get better and never get well. Yes. And you know, yes. and when you've been suffering for so long, like for some of us, the addiction came in at such a rush and it created such a dysfunction in our lives that we found ourselves homeless, under bridges, living in other people's mm. homes, stealing, lying, cheating, denying God and everything that could possibly help us, we just pushed away. But others of us, we have been sauntering through this life just on the, on the, on the edge of destruction. Mm. And we've been able to continue to fix the surface so we never really had to look at the root. And I spot saying, guess what? Here's the root. And what do you want to do with it? It's time to start looking at the root. You so. know, when, when people can get that root gone, oh, yeah. the, freedom the freedom that comes from is that amazing. is incredible because you can you can cover the and you can say I'm getting better and things are feeling yes. better and mm -hmm. I'm improving, but yet when you get rid of that root, right. the freedom right. from inside, the Amen. change that are broken Amen. are God. incredible. Praise God. So this takes place at your church. At tell Lafayette us, first. tell us yes. the location, the yes. time, okay. and uh, let's say you've got got a man who uh, he's got custody of his of his five year old daughter. Yes. What do you do with a situation like that? Okay, we got a man who has custody of his five year old oh, daughter. Oh, well, I first just thing, happened to first say thing, that. Yeah, but that's cool because that's the kind of thing that we want to address because yes. that's the thing that somebody wants to keep secret. See, they don't want to talk about their daughter and the relationship of that custody because well, all they really want, I just want my kids back. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to change. You don't want to fix the thing that, you know, that made it possible for you not to have your child. But to answer your first question, Lafayette First United Methodist Church, 204 West Main Street all right, we've in got Lafayette, it there on Ohio the at 7 p.m. or every Thursday night. This is when Hotspot meets. But getting back to the guy with the child and mm -hmm. he's got custody or he wants custody or he yeah. wants more time with his child. We're saying in Hotspot that, what's the reason that you have to be here? What's the reason that you're searching for custody of your child? What's the reason that this very um, personal and private and anointed thing that God has given you needs to be addressed? Why aren't you just like everyone else? We get so happy about the fact that, oh, I got my kid back, but I wanna know why you lost them. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And there's no glory in, and no, um, uh, how could I put this? There's no uh, glory in saying, well, I got my child. You should have your child. 
You know, you should have your child. And rather than saying, well, let us help you to get your child back, let's tell you how you can maneuver and do this, mm -hmm. that, and the other, because we've been fixing, managing, and controlling for so long. We've been able to bamboozle and hoodwink mm -hmm. everybody that we've come in contact with. And so now we're standing up in a hot spot where we can no longer do this because the men around us are same type of men. So we're saying, what are you gonna do? And why did you need this in the first place? Let's address the root. Let's address the root. I know you want your child back, but let's talk about why you don't have them. You know, and most people don't wanna do that. And when you put them in a position where they have to look deep inside mm -hmm. of themselves, look at the root, then they want to run away. The good thing about hot spot is says that if you want to leave, go. There's no requirements. No, we just say well, bye. Except the freedom. We say that can bye. Come with and it. people say, well, how can you be a Christian based? How can you be a pastor and say you just tell people bye? Because we really believe this is what came out of the hot spot agenda. When God gave me this dream a year ago, I really thought that, man, this isn't gonna work. And not because God said it, because it's immediately upon him saying it, I bought it lock, stock and barrel. But I got flag back from others who said, there are so many programs. Why would you wanna reinvent the wheel? How can this happen? This is not gonna last and all of these type of things. And I say that only because of one thing, God is glorified when we are obedient. Amen. The blessings follow. And I just say, you know what? I'm gonna listen to God. So God said, we need a no frills assault on the problems that bind men. Mm -hmm. We need something that, and we need members who would seek a higher accountability and acceptance of their own responsibility with the misnomer, with the knowledge that they know that there's no wiggle room. If you can't make it to the meeting and you need $5 for um, bus fare or whatever, we're going to say, well, I saw you walking down Main Street to the south end or to the north end or to the west end or to the east end or wherever you go to get your fix and do what you do and you didn't need anything then yeah. but now you want five dollars and we are maybe two miles closer than that walk you took to get your drugs so if you can walk that far then what will you do for your sobriety no mm. we don't have five dollars for you but we do have a program called hot spot and you're welcome to come back next thursday it's going to give them far more yes, than five dollars it's going to give yeah. them far more than anything no frills assault on the problems that bind men. That is what's yes, being offered that is. through the saving grace of Jesus Christ through Hotspot. It's Thursdays at seven o'clock. This is not like any other program in the area. This, as Pastor Wayne yeah. said, this came to him in a dream. Yes. He spoke with other brothers in the Lord. They worked together, created this program. It's been going for more than a year. And I tell you, if anything that you've heard in this last 10 minutes has sparked something, or maybe somebody you know, or maybe it's your son, or maybe it's your Amen. brother, or maybe Praise it's God. your uncle, or maybe it's your husband, maybe it's you. I Hallelujah. encourage you to be praying Hallelujah. that if this is where God wants you to go, you don't need to live in chains. No, God don't. wants to break that, break free from that. But like Wayne, Pastor Wayne said, getting through that chain is sometimes the most difficult thing because the devil wants to keep you there and it yes. becomes comfortable. And maybe that's where you want to feel. Sometimes it's easier to live in chaos because we yeah. know what it is, but that's not what God wants. God wants you to be in freedom. I encourage you to uh, look more into Hot Spot. It is Thursdays at seven o'clock at Lafayette First United Methodist yes. Church in Lafayette. And here's the information where you can get more information. You can email Pastor Wayne Bradley at the address you see there on the screen, bradleywayne51 at yahoo.com, or you can call 419-296-1222. God bless. Mark, back to you. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Aiming to get on God's path and staying there, plus strengthening your relationship with Christ, those should be the goals of all this coming year, and we want to help you in that journey. You've heard us talk about the 2015 Faith Challenge, five specific target areas designed to draw you closer to Christ. Well, earlier this year, or this month, I should say, year-end giving statements were sent to all who donated to TV44 in 2014. Included with those statements was an invitation to commit to the 2015 Faith Challenge. Now here are the five focus points. Read the Bible daily, daily prayer time, watch for divine appointments, be open to God's leading, and forgive others. Well, starting in February, we're going to take a closer look at each of those areas. But now is the time to commit to making them priority in your life. Now, if you received one of these in the mail, we encourage you to pray about it and then return it, signed, so we can begin praying for you. 
Now, you don't have to send us anything in the mail. You can also communicate us with us online. Visit faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Click Contact the Show, fill out the information, and tell us, I'm taking the 2015 Faith Challenge. And this year, not only will we pray for you, but you'll receive Jennifer's special 2015 Faith Challenge prayer emails and more. Now, in the end, our hope and prayer is to see you draw closer to Christ. Andy and Zach. Thank you, Mark. Well, we want to take a moment and say congratulations to the local winners of this year's Martin Luther King Jr. Awards. They included local pastor and gospel singer Claytonia Manley Logan, who was honored with the Mary Coleman Award. Among other ways, Martin Luther King Jr. Day being rec recognized with the annual March in Lima. This year marked the ninth year for the march, organized by Councilman Derry Glenn. That's right, and ML... K's dream continued to live on as the annual Martin Luther King oratorical contest is in the beginning stages. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, are invited to take part in this annual contest. For more information on that, visit IamMakingADifference.org to find out how you can sign up for the contest. <laughs> well, we have a wonderful praise report to share next here on Faith and Friends. It is likely you or someone you love has faced cancer. Well, this is a story of courage, treatment, and success. Dancy has more. Well, Sonia Kreitz joins me now, and it is such a pleasure to have her with us. She is a cancer survivor, and I want to stress the word survivor. She has quite the story to tell, and I'm so glad that you could be with us today. Thank you. I know that this has been a journey of many years, really, for you. Um, so let's go back to the beginning when you were first diagnosed and how that all happened. I was first diagnosed in 1995. I had a six month old and a two year old at home and I was nursing my son, found a lump, went to my gynecologist and he asked me to have a mammogram. I said, I'm only 27, why do I have to have a mammogram? I just think it's a clogged milk duct and he said, appease me. And I went and had the mammogram and it ended up being breast cancer. And how does that feel? I know that it's hard to put into words sometimes, but... It was devastating. I mean, to, when you hear the C word, and as young as I was, I, I thought I was going to die. Were you by yourself when you got the diagnosis? I was married at the time. Okay. Yeah. And um, are you glad that you had someone with you? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So then what was the next step? Then the next step was um, I had seen uh, the gynecologist on Monday. I had the mammogram on Tuesday, saw the surgeon on Wednesday, and had oh. surgery on Friday. And that's what they say now that, you know, um, I think Joan London was recently diagnosed with um, breast cancer, and she said that same thing that you are given the diagnosis and then your life changes because you and have decisions flash. to make immediately. Right. Wow. So you had surgery? Yes. Okay, and then did that come out okay? Was yes. everything all right? Yes, I had a radical mastectomy and everything came out okay. okay. And um, it was a little hard having two little ones. Yeah, right. And then my uh, marriage ended because okay. of the stress or? Just too much stress, he couldn't handle it. So we wow. got a divorce and then I was a single mom with two children and and recovering from surgery and, and, and just going through chemotherapy. Did you? Yes, I had six months of chemotherapy. And did you have a family support system? Yes, my parents were a huge support system for me. Good. And I had just started going to church. Really? So I had a newfound faith and I would not have made it through had it not been for my church family and church and God. So you said that you had just started going to church. Um, was that bef right before or after your diagnosis? Right before my diagnosis. And I had Seriously. handed everything over to God. And when the diagnosis happened, I said, this is not what we had agreed upon. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then you got through chemotherapy, which you said was, was hard. Right. Um, and it can take different forms for a lot of, uh, for a lot of people. Um, and, and then you had many good years, didn't you? Yes, yeah, seven and a half good years. Mm -hmm. Good years. And then in 2002, I was re-diagnosed with uh, metastatic breast cancer to the bones. And um, <clears throat> pretty devastating again. Um, my diagnosis was I would live two years. I was walking at work and my left leg just gave out on me. <clears throat> and uh, it was in my left pelvic. And I had a 10 centimeter mass that in my pelvic was kind of like Swiss cheese, lots of holes and a fracture. 
Wow, right. So what's the treatment for that? It is to have radiation. And um, I've had scans now, and they can't even tell that I ever had cancer in that area. So. And the scan, really, that you just had was very recent. Yes, I just had a PET scan. Um, last year in September 2013, I was diagnosed with liver mets and basically had been given six months. And it's been a year, and I went for my PET scan. It was completely clear in the liver. and. Uh, I was told by my doctor at the Mayo Clinic, you will live a long time. Oh. And she gives all the glory to God because she said, okay. it usually is your demise. If it hits the liver, it usually doesn't leave the liver. Oh. And she said, divine intervention is the only explanation we have. I'm sure that this is incredible for those doctors. I mean, I know they have faith, and um, not all, but. She didn't at first. Really? She. Um, I was reading a book by Joel Osteen, yeah. and she was interested in the book, and I went and bought her the book and came back a year later, and she told me that they were attending a Christian church, her, her husband and her two boys, and because of my faith and the journey that I have gone over the last 12 years, that she's found faith in me, and she is a Christian now. What a Thank, story. Yeah, yeah. Just praise the Lord mm, for not awesome. only the perseverance that she went through, but the way God is using using her through that. And thank you for mm. that healing. Well, we want to remind you that you can rewatch this in all of our Faith and Friends segments anytime on your computer, on your phone, on your tablet. Just visit faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Before we go, some much deserved thanks going out to the hundreds of you mm. who have committed mm. to standing with TV44 financially in 2015. That's right. Our pledge campaign continues through the end of January. So if you've been thinking about giving to TV44 but haven't yet done so, today would be a wonderful day to do that. Donating is simple and safe, and we are very grateful for it. Here's how you can find us. Visit our website anytime, WTLW.com, or visit us in person at 1844 Beatty Road in Lima, right here. You can also call us between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., Monday through Friday. A convenient monthly option is automatic monthly withdrawal. Give us a call or send us an email at contact at WTLW.com if you'd like to be a part of that. And we can provide you a form that starts that process. Thank you for your financial contributions throughout this new year. I just filled out that form two weeks ago so that we can be automatically giving. I don't, it's not that I don't want to think about giving, but it's helpful that it just automatically comes out of the checking account. Mm -hmm. Very simple, very easy, and what a great way to make sure that we are ongoingly financially partnering with TV44. Well, before we go, another look at our 2015 Faith Challenges. Will you take the challenge? In 2015, we encourage you to do the following. Read the Bible daily, daily prayer time, and look for divine appointments. Be open to God's leading, and number five, forgive others. You know, you're not alone as you venture into this new year and striving to live more like Christ. Contact us via, via faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Hit that little contact button, contact the show, and let us know you're taking the faith challenge so we can begin praying for you. And now for one more look at our verse of the day. Andy? We're talking about eagles taking <laughs> us to Isaiah 40, 30, and 31. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Great words for the rest of your week, hopefully to encourage you. Certainly words we can all take into our heart. Thank you for joining us this week on Faith and Friends. We'll see you next time.